and make the announcement here with YouTube. So much, so grateful for those of you who are watching on YouTube and on Facebook at Lillian's Radio Show. Today, we're going to start something that I haven't done in a while, and we're going to talk about Catholicism, the myths, the dogmas, the all the stuff that that uh, many people just don't know about Catholicism. So today, fasten your seatbelts because we're gonna learn and grow together. We're also gonna be talking about the giveaway. It's St. Patrick's Day. How wonderful to have a Catholic friend on St. Patrick's Day. So here we go. It's time to dance. The Lillian McDermott Show. We love, we fear. Bridges we burn, we make mistakes, then we live and learn. When life gets tough, and it seems like your best ain't good enough. If you're in need of hope, you know where I'll be. I'll be right here, right here. And when you need a friend, you can count. This is the place you can always turn to when you need a friend. The Lillian McDermott Show. To reach out to Lillian, visit her on the web at whenyouneedafriend.com. Now let's all learn together. Here's Lillian McDermott. Hello, my listening friend. It's so nice we can meet each other on the air on this beautiful, best day ever. And for those of you who are new to the classroom, please know I've been waiting for you. This is a safe place where you can go to when you need a friend. It is my commitment to provide alternative voice to heal, and it is my mission to make awareness, responsibility, and truth a part of our everyday life. And I hope you, my listening, as well as my viewing friends at facebook.com forward slash Lillian's Radio Show, will feel empowered to embrace a new truth and live the life of your dreams. Now, I, I want to share with you, this is... Um, a series, a segment that I absolutely loved a long time ago, uh, back when we were a radio show, I did um, Breaking Down the Walls of Religion to find out what do we have in common. I've worshipped with Muslims, I've worshipped with Sikhs, Hindus, Buddhists, Christians, and also atheists and agnostics. And the goal is to find out what do we have in common? What do we have in common? There's so many things that we are looking at the worst in people, the negative in people, but to find what we have in common. So the only difference in most religions is, in, in, is, is the door, is the, is the building. Many of us have a lot more in common, but we, we don't even enter into that door because I'm not this religion or that religion. What about just being human? and being believers in something. And so with that in mind, something happened many, many, a couple years ago, and I was told that I could no longer do uh, on the radio, breaking down the walls of religion to find what we have in common. So since I am not doing radio anymore, I thought, and, 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 I met John just strictly by divine intervention. And, I, and I'm really excited about that because, you know, John Martignoni has his own talk show on EWTN, and he is, it's, it's called EW, EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. So he's been doing this for a long time. And one of the things that we started talking about is, you know, I really have brought in a lot of different religions, but I haven't been able to do one on Catholicism. Well, he turns out to be uh, an apologetic. So he, he is, I don't know if I even said that correctly, but I am so excited that it is our sole purpose in life to give and receive love and knowledge. And I am grateful that John Martignoni is here to do just that. Welcome, John, to the classroom. Lily, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so how does it feel to be on the other side? Um, well, I actually, am on the other side a decent number of times. I get interviewed on, on various uh, radio shows and I do a lot of uh, 
uh, on-air pledge drives for, for Catholic radio stations. So yeah. fairly used to it, but uh, it, it's, it's, it's not as comfortable as being on your side. Really? I love being on your side. So. Really? Yeah, I do. I do. But here today, we're talking about Catholicism. And I felt after our conversation that you called me back and we just, just started talking about one thing after another, two radio show hosts, you know, just getting together, licking our wounds, having talking about, yeah, having at it. And I thought, you know what? I really would love to do breaking down the walls of religion with Catholicism. So share a little bit about your background, John, and what led you to becoming, is it an apologist? An apologist. Yes. And just for, for everyone, an apologist, do you think, oh, he goes around apologizing for Catholicism. An apology in ancient Greece was the case a lawyer would make on behalf of his client. So a, an apologist is someone who makes the case for something. As a Catholic apologist, I make the case for the Catholic Church. A Baptist apologist for the Baptist Church. A Muslim apologist for, the, for Islam and so forth and so on. So basically being an apologist is explaining and defending your faith, your position. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I, was, I was born Catholic, grew up Catholic, um, but really never learned my faith growing up. You know, it, was, it was in the late 60s, early 70s. Religion didn't really mean a lot to me, again, because I didn't really learn what the church taught. And so I tell people, when I went off to college at the University of Alabama, when I stepped onto the campus, I stepped right out of the church. And I was out of the church for 13 years and never went to any other churches. I, I tell people I was a heathen's heathen, um, world-class heathen. Uh, and But through a series of coincidences, uh, yeah, I got my degree in finance, an MBA at Alabama, went into the working world as a, a cost analyst for defense industries, uh, defense companies in Huntsville, Alabama, which is where I grew up, and did that for several years and didn't really like what I was doing, so I thought I'll go back to school. So I went back to school to the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill to work on a PhD in finance. I did one year of that. And I didn't like the PhD program. It was nowhere near as fun as, as the undergraduate program. Mm -hmm. But that, so that year I, I quit the PhD program after a year, but that's when I came back into the church. I, I had come across a, a book that was just kind of uh, left on a shelf in the office that they randomly assigned me. And the whole book was on the letter of Paul to the Romans. And I read it and was interested and went down to the bookstore on campus and they had all sorts of books in the Christian section and I didn't know what I was looking for, but I just started picking up books. I got a book by C.S. Lewis called Mere Christianity, a book by St. Augustine, uh, The Confessions, and basically read my way back into the church at the end of that year, moved back to Alabama. <coughs> You'll have to excuse me, I've been fighting a little infection. Mm -hmm. um, and... Um, got into banking and then into the nonprofit world as a business manager and f ended up doing a Catholic apologetic show on the largest evangelical radio station in the state of Alabama uh, because they had played a very anti-Catholic program. I called to complain and said, you need to let a Catholic come on to respond to that. And I didn't mean this Catholic, but <laughs> that's, the way it, that's the way it ended up. And, and so that, that kind of launched my career in, in public apologetics. And after I was on the radio for several weeks, people start calling and say, can you come to my parish and give a talk? Can you come here and give a talk? And I was like, well, yeah, I guess I can. And so I started talking and some, some of the talks got recorded. EWTN radio played them and their affiliates on FM and AM played them. And then people started calling me from all over the country wow. saying, can we get copies of your talks? And can you come talk here in Kalamazoo, Michigan, here in uh, Stockton, California, and all, all over the place. And so now, several years later, we've shipped out probably close to 2 million copies of audio. Uh, and, and I've got a newsletter with 40,000 subscribers. And it's just, it's crazy. Absolutely crazy. That's What's wonderful. That? Isn't it wonderful how... Our journey and our path gets us exactly where we need to be, right when we need to bring, be it. Yes, 
absolutely. Because I tell people, I say, well, you know, this was not what I planned to be. I, I didn't grow up going, mom, I'm going to be a Catholic apologist. You know, uh, I grew up saying I'm going to be a millionaire by the time I'm 30. Uh, investments, the stock market, that was me. And God had other plans. And he did. And he did. And I, you know, I think you just, whatever you did, gave it to me. So I've got, <laughs> there we go. And we're healthy. We are healthy. Yes. I, just, yes. I got a little tickle in my throat. So let's talk about that. Let's talk not my, about my tickle in my throat. The fact that, you know, you strayed from the church is, you know, and you called yourself a heathen. Yes. And here you are finding yourself back. And it shows you that when the student is ready, the teacher appears. What was it about the letters from Paul to the Romans that spoke to you? Well, I can't really. And the, the book that I got was a real thin book. And it was by a Methodist minister who was Chinese. His name was Watch, Watchman Nee. And um, can't remember. All I remember is that this was different than any book I'd ever read before. Yeah. And I just remember, I, you know, I'm, I'm interested. I want it. It wasn't like a, oh, my goodness, I have to come back. Right. It was just this is interesting. And so mm -hmm. I, I thought, I want to get more. And so I went down to the bookstore. And again, this was the student bookstore. It was probably the best stocked Christian section I've ever seen in any bookstore. And um, I just wandered into the Christian section. And here's Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis, who I had never, at that point in time, had never heard of. And I'd never heard of the book. So I, I just picked it at random. And it's a book on Christian apologetics, why you should be Christian, what the Christian faith is all about. Uh, and so I read that and got a couple more C.S. Lewis books. And like I said, I said, I'm kind of tired of him and just wandered in. And well, this St. Augustine, well, I've, I've heard of him as a Catholic, but didn't really know anything about him. So I read that. And then, then there was a book on the love of God by St. Francis de Sales. And so it was just, over the course of a year, I was reading more books on spirituality and the Catholic faith than I was on economics and finance, which is one reason why I left the program. But uh, um, at the end of the year, I just I made a decision. I said, well, do you believe this or not? And if you do, you have to do something about it. And I said, yes, I do. So that's when I went back, you know, I went to the, uh, the priest on campus and said, Father, I want to go to confession. It's been wow. 15 years or whatever it was since I'd been to confession. So that's what started me back. Now, do you find yourself having to um, defend the Catholic Church, or are you okay with people having a difference of opinion? What I tell people is, if you don't want to believe what I believe, that's fine. <clears throat> But don't believe, but, but if you want to disagree with what I believe, fine. But disagree with what I actually believe, not with some made up thing or half truth or, or misperception sure. or misunderstanding, mm -hmm. which as a Catholic, there are many, many, many of those misunderstandings and half truths and misper misperceptions out there. So let's talk about those. So let's talk about the beliefs. What would you say are the top, whatever you think, these are the ones that are most important as a Catholic. And of course, there's dogmas, there's doctrines, there's uh, um, the practice of Catholicism and the rituals of Catholicism. And I want to disclose, I grew up Catholic my entire life. And as I got older, I think the opposite happened to me. I became curious about world religion. I became curious about what do I have in common as a Catholic with a Buddhist? What do I have in common with a Muslim as a, you know, as a Catholic? And so those things made me see that we truly are one. We are one. And, I, and I, when, I, when I talk about breaking down the walls of religion, it's so that we can focus on being that one. We're all children of God, all. And so with that in mind, let's talk about the belief 
uh, of the Catholic Church that you feel is most important for people to understand? Well, the, the number one belief is er everything about the Catholic Church is designed to get a person to heaven. Uh, if you come to a Catholic mass, the worship service, if you will, you will notice not just that we're praying, but we're standing, we're sitting, we're kneeling, we get up and go to communion. So our bodies are involved as well as our souls, our mind, our intellect. So for the Catholic Church, everything about Catholicism is designed to move you physically, spiritually, emotionally, mentally to Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. to salvation. Who, you know, for us, Jesus Christ is the Word of God, He is salvation for us. And so everything about the Catholic Church is designed to get you to God, to spend eternity in heaven with God, um, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's what the whole, whole religion is all about. And do you, do you feel that other religions don't do that, or do you feel that the Catholic Church does it as well? Well, what I say to people is, um, truth is a big thing for me. It, it, as I, it really is for everyone, although there are people out there who say, well, your truth is good for you, my truth is good. And it's like, well, truth cannot conflict with truth. So uh, relativism is not, I'm not big on. But I tell people, I say, look, I believe the Catholic Church is true. And because I believe it's true, I want everyone else to believe it's true as well. Mm -hmm. So I will talk to you, to you, to you, to whoever about the truths of the Catholic faith. And if someone says, well, I'm Baptist, so am I going to hell? I say, I don't condemn anybody to hell. Mm -hmm. What I say is, what I ask the Baptist, I say, do you believe what you, what your church teaches is true? And they'll say yes. I say, well, then now I can deal with you because we can disagree you know, you can say, this is what I believe is true, and, mm -hmm. and this is what I believe is true. And where they contradict each other, well, at least one of us is wrong. Okay, let's talk about it. I have no problem somebody telling me, John, you're wrong. Because I'm going to tell somebody else, well, I believe you're wrong. Okay, let's talk about it. As adult human beings, mm -hmm. with the respect for your person and hopefully respect for my person, Mm -hmm. And let's see if we can either I can convince you, you can convince me, or at the very least, we can come to a better understanding of each other's beliefs, which makes for, you know, for example, I'll just say, um, you know, I have some very good Baptist friends, and we disagree on some major doctrines and dogmas. Okay. But we work together on issues of marriage, pro-life sanctity of life, uh, uh, end of life issues, uh, the poor, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, all. And the better we understand one another and our, what we believe, yeah. the better we're able to get along and work on these other things that we do have in common together. So you, and yeah, that's wonderful. So that's, so again, I, I, I am more than happy to tell somebody, I think you're wrong on that. And Hopefully they would say, well, and this is what I teach my kids. I said, look, if somebody says something to you that's negative towards you, <coughs> excuse me, negative towards you, what should you do? Should you automatically respond in anger? No. What you should do is take what they say and evaluate it. Mm -hmm. You know, if they say, well, you know, you're always making these smart aleck remarks and it really makes people upset. You should think to yourself, do I do that? Am I making smart aleck remarks? And am I making people upset? And if so, maybe I want to rethink what I do. Or you could say, well, no, I, I've thought about it and they, they don't know what they're talking about. I don't really do, I might have done it once or twice here, but not on a right. So I'll go back and say, I disagree with you. I don't do that. So you evaluate, you don't get upset. I always tell people when I'm teaching Catholics, how to explain and defend their faith, I always tell them, do not get angry. Even mm -hmm. if someone is, has a vicious attack on your faith and they're saying, oh, all Catholics are going to hell and this is, 
view that as an opportunity to start a dialogue. Oh, well, why do you think I'm going to hell? Yeah. Yep. And maybe I am going to hell. Who knows? I, you know, it's not up, that decision, not up to me even. So let's talk about it. Why are you, why are you saying that? Well, here's where I disagree. Here's where I agree. You know, and I tell people all the time, because of what I do, I've been called all sorts of names by all sorts of people. And they say, well, how do you handle that? I say, well, generally, I, I agree with them. <laughs> John, you're a blankety blank blank. Well, yeah, I have to agree with you there. You know, it, you're not going to get me upset. You are not going to ruffle my feathers because what am I, what's my purpose? My purpose is to share truth with you. And hopefully your purpose is to share truth with me. And together we can, you know, come to a better understanding of one another. I love it. I love it. But here's the thing. I believe that you can't argue facts. But when it comes to religion and politics, which are two different, you know, like I don't talk sports, I don't talk politics in the classroom. But, you know, I do talk about spirituality. I do embrace religion. Um, you know, some people, religion is their, religion is their religion. And it's, you know, being there, the act of being there. It may just be about the works. It may not be about the faith. It may be about, and that's their own thing. That's their own judgment. That's their own. It's not for me to decide why they go to church. But I will say that everybody feels that they have the truth. Everybody feels that they have the fact. And so um, you, if you cannot argue your truth or your fact and my fact or my belief, whatever it is, doesn't it make sense to have a conversation about it and to get to know, I don't need to convince you and you don't need to convince me, but how about let's just have a conversation of what we do believe. And if you don't buy into it, that's fine too. But at least you had that conversation and you get to know each other a little bit better. I mean, to me, that that's what makes sense for me. Does that, does that well, make sense? Yeah, it does. And what I tell people, I say, look, um, there are, spiritual facts, spiritual laws, just like there are physical facts, physical laws. Mm -hmm. And so if you say, um, you know, like what I tell, I say, you can't argue emotions. Okay. If I feel this, well, I can't tell you, you don't feel that. Correct. I, I can't do that. And I'm not going to do that. Well, yeah. but that's, that's what starts the argument. No, you don't, John. No, you don't. Exactly. Well, I tell <laughs> the, the most common one I get, people, there's uh, one of the biggest misperceptions about Catholics is that we worship Mary. Yes. Okay? Yes. I have had people tell me, well, you Catholics worship Mary. And I say, no, we honor Mary. We love Mary. We imitate, you know, we are called to imitate Christ. She was Jesus's mother. Very important person, right? I would yeah. say. He loved Mary. And so if we're imitating him, we should love Mary too and honor her as he, on, you know, honor thy father and thy mother. No, you worship her. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Here's my catechism of my Catholic church that has, you know, 99% of our teaching. Nowhere in there will you find anything that says we worship Mary, we consider a deity, she's the fourth person of the quadrinity, or anything like that. You know, oh yes, you worship Mary. So I say, look, I'm sorry, I can't deal with you because mm -hmm. you will not accept what I say about my faith as true. You are trying to tell me what I believe. And that's that's where I say, no, nope, end the conversation. We we can't go anywhere here. Because yeah. I'm not yeah. going to try to tell you what you believe, so don't try to tell me what I believe. Yes, and, and I totally agree with that. So the belief of the Catholic Church is that um, Jesus is the Trinity. Jesus, um, God, and the Holy Spirit. So there's God, God Jesus, Trinity. the Holy Spirit. Yep. That's right. And so the Trinity, all three in one. Most religions believe that too, right? Most religions believe in the Trinity. Well, the, the Christian, all, most of the Christian religions, all the Christian religions, yes. Uh, Islam does not believe in the Trinity. Uh, the, the Buddhism, Judaism, Hinduism, they do not believe. But for Christians, all the Christians do believe in the Trinity. But they do believe in God. So, it, yes. it, okay, 
So here's, here's where I, I try to find commonality, right? And it's not to convince people to be a Catholic or to not be a Catholic. What I listen to and what I translate in my head is God. Like I interviewed um, Abhinash Dwavedi, who is absolutely the most wonderful man, and he is Hindu. And so he taught us about, you know, the beliefs of the Hindu. And, um, and so he said that, yes, they say that the, the Hinduism has like 350,000 different gods or, or deities, but there's only I one God. And so the way he explained it to me was that there were many pictures of your mother, let's say, for example, or there are many pictures of your father or yourself, but there are different phases of your life. And that ultimately, it's the same person, but it's how you perceive that person, how you see that person. And to me, the fact that they believe in God, and if we're saying that the Holy Spirit, um, God the Father and Jesus are the same thing, then we could translate in our head that they believe at least in God, which is part of what we believe in. Um, right. Well, in, in the Catholic faith, what we say is, there, you can find truth in pretty much all religions, okay? There is truth in Hinduism. There is truth in Buddhism, Islam, Judaism, etc. cetera. Uh, for a Catholic Christian, there is truth in the Baptist religion, in the um, Episcopal, Methodist, Evangelical, etc. What we say as Catholics is that we believe we have the fullness of the truth. And if I didn't believe that, well then that means the fullness of truth is out there somewhere and I should go be something else. And I would, then that's what I say about Buddhist, about uh, Hindus, about if they don't believe they have the fullness of the truth in their religion, well, then they should go looking for the religion that does have the fullness of the truth. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, and, and I think that's beautiful. That's a, it's a beautiful thing to be wherever you feel closest to God and, and feel your spirit felt, felt um, filled. Is, is so important for me many years it's been the catholic church and uh and so but there there comes a time where your spirituality and your religion stop start getting out of balance what would you say the catholic church believes as far as religion versus spirituality well catholic church would say you really can't have a um a full spirituality if you don't have the fullness of the religion, because uh, primarily because of the sacraments, you know, the, the seven sacraments of the Catholic church, the, the, the source and the summit, the most important one being obviously, well, after, after baptism, which is the uh, initial and entry point into the faith, into union with Christ, then the Eucharist, which we believe is the actual body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. And so, the when you receive the eucharist it's analogous or, or i guess what what occurs between husband and wife physical union is analogous to what occurs between a, a person when they and and christ when they receive when that person receives the eucharist it's the two become one and so in the eucharist your your spiritual out your spirituality is, is fed, it's nourished, you receive incredible grace from God, and, and the same with the other sacraments, but again, predominantly the Eucharist. Um, and through that, then your spirituality, you can grow deeper and deeper into God and, and closer and closer to God. And as we grow closer to God, then we are becoming more of whom we are meant to be because yeah. we are meant to be in union with God. That's what we were created for. And so the Catholic would say this whole thing of, well, I'm spiritual, but not religious. Well, that's, you know, a lot of people use that to just basically say, I want to make up my own rules for my own religion. You know, I, I have some idea of God, but I want to do God the way I want to do God. Yeah. Whereas the Catholic church says, no, we have a religion that was founded by God and he kind of showed us the way. And if the analogy I like to make is, do you, do you play any musical instruments, a guitar or anything? Well, I, I dabble in the piano and I sing. Okay. Piano. Oh, and I play a mean tambourine. Oh, okay. Well, I can play 
on the piano, I can play Silent Night left handed. That's the only <laughs> thing I can do musically. Um, so, but here's the thing. If you want to play the piano and you say, I don't care about the rules of the piano. I don't care about, uh, you know, rules and regulations of the piano. I'm going to play the piano the way I want to play the piano. And you get on there and just start banging on the keys. It, it, it's, it's just noise. But if you say, if you learn the rules, the keys, the chords, how, okay, with the, you know, piano, you, the foot pedals with the, you know, then if you know the rules and regulations of the piano, you can make beautiful music. Well, as human beings, what we say as Catholics is that we as human beings, God made us with certain rules and regulations mm -hmm. as part of our nature. And if we learn those rules and regulations and we abide by them, then we can truly flourish as human beings and maximize our potential as human beings, both physically and spiritually, mentally and emotionally. But we've got to follow those rules. Mm -hmm. If we don't follow those rules, then we're going to run into problems, physical problems, mental, emotional, spiritual problems. So that's why, you know, we say, well, God who made us has now founded this church and set up these rules and regulations within this church. Come and see what it's all about and see if you don't maximize who you are as a human being through this, through, through the rules, the regulation, the sacraments of the church. And the sacraments, let's really quickly, let's talk about the baptism and Eucharist and com confession, communion. Go ahead. Seven sacraments. Yeah. Uh, baptism is the sacrament of initiation because what we say to people is it is through baptism that you become a member of the body of Christ that you receive the Holy Spirit. It's an absolute free gift of God. And the way we prove that, if you will, is that we baptize babies. Babies can't have faith. Babies can't do any works. Yet through baptism, which is a, a work of God through the priest, it, it's God doing it, um, you receive incredible grace and you become you know, in union, in covenant with God. Then after baptism, you have uh, uh, the next two sacraments, confession and, and the Eucharist. Well, usually in the Catholic Church, when you're around second grade, eight, nine years old, you're taught about sin and how you go to the priest to confess your sins. And the priest, using the authority of Christ, absolves you of those sins. It's Jesus doing it through the priest, just as some people are given the gift of healing physically. It's, it's not their power. It's God's power. Mm -hmm. God uses them as an instrument. The priests are given the power to heal people spiritually. God's power. The priest is the instrument. <coughs> Excuse me. And so uh, confession and then receiving the Eucharist, as I was just talking about, receiving Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity under the appearance of bread and wine. Mm -hmm. And we say incredible graces are received through those sacraments. Uh, the other the sacrament is, is um, confirmation, which is kind of a, a you know, your, your introduction to Christian adulthood. You're, you're confirmed in the Holy Spirit. You're given an extra boost of grace, if you will, for, for lack of a better analogy. Uh, then there's marriage, which for many people, not for all, you, you, you are married, you know, you and your spouse marry mm -hmm. each other. Through that, you receive grace. There's the sacrament of holy orders, which is for the priesthood, for the deacons, the bishops. And then uh, the sacrament of the anointing of the sick, uh, which we find in James chapter 5. Call for the elders, the presbyters, if someone is sick among you, and anoint them with oil. And again, through that, you're receiving grace from God for healing physically, hopefully, but more importantly, healing spiritually. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so with that in mind, um, one of the things, one of the issues, John, that I always had um, a problem with, and, and it's maybe because of just me, um, I always had a problem with com confession. And confession was something that didn't make sense to me in the Catholic Church. And the reason why is because I believe I had that power too, to heal. 
I don't know where that came from, but it was planted in me from the moment I was born that, the, the, you know, that I had that power. And, you know, when we do the classroom, we talk about how we can heal ourselves through forgiveness. We can heal ourselves through healing our, you know, forgiveness of past life traumas or past traumas or that we can heal. So having a priest say your sins are forgiven to me was not, it didn't make sense to me because I know that when Jesus breathed his, the Holy Spirit into the disciples when they were in the back room scared, he said, you will do this and more. And I took that seriously. And so this and more meant I, I can do this too. I, I'm not a priest, but I know that God forgives me. So what do you, what do you say for something like that for someone who, who maybe has an issue with confession or has an issue with utilizing that middleman to negotiate the deal? And then a lot of people do have an issue with that. So uh, here's the thing. I can tell you, when I was out of the church for 13 years, like I said, a heathen, heathen. <laughs> I, I, I tell people, I say, you name a commandment, one of the 10, I broke every commandment multiple times. And people say, well, wait, one of them is thou shalt not kill. Did you kill somebody? Well, I say, no. But in the Bible, it says, if you're angry and hate yes. your brother, it's the same as killing. It says it's, you have murdered them in your heart. Correct. So, correct. Um, Our thoughts uh, are so powerful, John. Yes. And that, that makes so much sense to me because thoughts are powerful, that powerful. Yes. And so what I would do is I still had a sense of God every so often, especially if I would buy a lottery ticket. God, let, let, this, you know, let this be the winning. You know, so exactly. Uh, and, and so, but, so I, I would do something that my conscience was telling me that's wrong. You shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. So I would say, okay, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me. And then the next day I'd think about it again. I said, well, did God hear me? You know, I, I mean, well, yeah, I probably heard because God's every, but did he forgive me? That's what I would, did he, so I would confess it over and over and over again. And when I came back into the church and I went to confession with a priest for the first time after at least 13 years, probably 14 or 15 years, I came out of there crying, literally tears come because I heard the voice of Jesus Christ through the priest say, I absolve you of your sins. Mm -hmm. And I knew I was forgiven. Confession is a very, I mean, from a psychological standpoint, God knows what he's doing when it comes to human beings and mm -hmm. the sacrament of confession, because what do we, we need affirmation as human beings. You know, you can look in the mirror and say to yourself, I'm great, I'm wonderful, all you want, but you're not gonna believe it as much as if somebody else tells you you are great and wonderful. You get that affirmation from someone else. So from the priest, we get God forgiving us, which is the vertical aspect of the, of the sacrament, but also the horizontal aspect. The priest on behalf of the church is forgiving us. But for what you said about we have the power to forgive, absolutely, because I'm sure you've probably said the Our Father in your life. Oh, yeah. Part of the Our Father from Matthew 6 is... Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Sure. There was a saint, famous saint, John Bosco in Italy in the 1800s. He had a big fight with his brother one day and he went to his mom and said, I hate my brother. And she said, okay, well, you need to go pray about this. She said, go pray the Our Father, but leave that part out about, you know, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive. He said, what do you mean? She said, because you're not forgiving your brother, so God's not going to forgive you. Mm. That's what you're saying. God, don't forgive me because I'm not forgiving my brother. Yeah. And it hit him like a ton of bricks, yeah. and he forgave his brother. So we have the power to forgive others on behalf of ourselves, but not on behalf of God. And that's where the role of the priest comes in, because he is duly ordained through, his, through the sacrament of of. Um, the uh, holy orders mm -hmm. and to forgive us on behalf of God. And, and again, from a purely psychological basis, you know, Carl Jung, who is Sigmund Freud's mm -hmm. top disciple, mm -hmm. he once said that of all the patients that he had, none of them were Catholics who regularly went to confession because they were already getting what they needed 
that psychological affirmation interesting from the confession booth okay well that's that's beautiful so let's move on because i really do want to get as much as possible and and by the way for for those of you who are new to the Lillian McDermott radio show classroom, please know that we are, this is where we take ownership for our life. And today we're taking ownership of, you know, learning not only about the belief of Catholicism, but to understand what Catholicism is all about and to say, okay, well, I can identify with this and that alone, just be able to embrace that belief and embrace the people um, as well. So this is where we take ownership, not just for our spirituality and religion, but for our health, the way we eat, think, act, and move, and whatever it is that you are looking for to achieve the life that you want, because God wants us all to have the riches. There's so much abundance in this world, and God wants that for us. And so how do we create it for ourselves? We talked about the thoughts and how the thought, you know, even thinking you know, that you are angry with your brother is compared to murder in the Bible. So how do you release yourself and release others in that is here? We do this here at whenyouneedafriend.com. That's where you can go to um, and take ownership, take ownership of your life and saying, you know, the buck stops here. I'm not going to blame my brother. I am going to fix it. I am the solution, not the if I continue to focus on the problem, I will always be the problem. So this is where we take ownership for our life. And we learn from different teachers. Today, we're learning from John Martignoni. And we're learning about the Catholic Church by breaking down the wall of religion. But we do have other conversations. So while you're at whenyouneedafriend.com, please subscribe. Be a part of the tribe. And um, follow us and like us on Facebook and YouTube and um, and social media, podcasts, we're everywhere. I'm just so excited about this. And the classroom is growing every day. People are thirsty for this kind of empowerment because we're, we find ourselves blaming others for who we are. So this is where we take ownership for our lives. And I ask you to, while you're there, make sure you check onto my um, sponsors page because without my sponsors, there'd be no classroom. So sponsors like Liberty Health Share, Keep Me Safe Organics, beauty products, all organic um, and pesticide free. And so chemical free, this is where we take our health back as well. Um, we if all, let me talk to you about if you are concerned about going to the doctor or going out there and you're not feeling well, especially with the Corona virus, uh, COVID-19, uh, first alternative care. You can help the whole family with telemedicine for non-urgent family practice, uh, dermatology, and three hours a year behavioral health counseling, as, as well as a portal for the entire household. And the household can be, you know, whoever's living in your home. It doesn't have to be a family. It could be anyone who's in your home for just $45 a month. And if there's ever a time that the, the uh, first alternative care, just go on to my sponsors page for $45 a month. You have 24 seven, someone that will call you if you're feeling sick, they can even prescribe. And that way you don't even have to go to the doctor. You can have the pharmacy send it to you. That way you can continue to stay safe and not spread any germs. Uh, Dr. Stephen Grable, who's holistic functional alternative in Jacksonville, Florida. We have, um, the pharmacy in Merritt Island, who is just phenomenal. Um, just check them out. They're in Merritt Island. Live Longer Medical, who's helping the inside look as good as the outside. Ground Therapy, Brain Tap, who we're always taking. We're, we're bringing the earth back in and rewriting the program of all those negative thoughts that go through our mind. And so support the, the uh, sponsors the way that they are supporting the classroom. And finally, you can become an enrolled student in the classroom. So check out how you can support us, time, talent, and treasure. That comes from being a Catholic and raising so much money for the Catholic Church. Time, talent, and treasure has been a part of who we are and what we do and how we continue to allow the classroom of church, the classroom of our life to grow. So please remember, uh, when you need a friend.com is where you can always follow us and you can always join the classroom at Lillian's radio show on facebook.com. 
So with that in mind, I'm grateful to John. I want to do, I want you to know that you can find out more information from John. Go to Bible Christi, uh, Christianity. No, oh, no, no. Bi okay, hold on a second. Let me, let me get this right. I had it written. I wrote it down. Uh, BibleChristianSociety.com. That's BibleChristianSociety.com to learn more about John. John, I'm really grateful. I remember our first conversation. I was in California at the time and that, yes. that, that, that chance call turned into what an hour call and this Don't now like that. Yeah. yeah so you know it's divine and i and i and i honor the divine in you we are all the carriers of that divinity that breath that was breathed into us that can be traced to the disciples at that time and i uh in, in the back room and so you know i love that about the richness of catholicism we're christian jews is basically what Catholicism started as we, we were, you know, when it comes to Jesus being Jewish and now the Catholicism where we built the church. And so I, I'm, I'm very proud of the foundation my parents taught us. And so I want to thank you for continuing that torch, John, with so many that need to under, understand the myths about any religion let alone Catholicism. So thank you so much for what you do. Well, it's, it's my pleasure. And like I said, we are all made in the image and likeness of God. And it's a, it's a wonderful thing. And, and there's a commonness in humanity. And, and like I said, it's, you know, for me, and, and I think with you as well, the search for truth mm -hmm. and just respecting everyone and, and knowing that, hey, everyone we're talking to, even if we disagree with them about religion or yes even worse in this day and age politics this is still a human being who is made in the image and likeness of god and deserves respect as a human being yeah so just the fact that they are alive they deserve that respect so i, I appreciate what you're doing and, and again i appreciate you having me on this on your program here it's, it's, yes it's, it's, i love it I, and you know what i have a feeling that we're going to have more conversations because there's so much that we haven't even dipped the toe on um, I do want to uh, remind all of you that uh, today we are giving away uh, a ground therapy pad, a mat, which helps bring the earth's frequency right into your house. Um, so I have it at my feet so that all those electric, all that stuff that's happening around me keeps me grounded like the earth does. And we're giving away one, but there are things that you can do. You're, you're able to like and follow us and share this, um, this class with people, uh, the, the advertisement just where it says uh, the luck of the Irish. If you feel lucky, you can participate because we're gonna do this after the classroom today. Um, so you need to like us, follow us, tag as many people. And as many people as you tag, um, you will get your name enrolled into the giveaway. Also, um, you know, like me on um, whenyouneedafriend.com, follow us, subscribe there and also the YouTube channel. So as much as, you, as much as you do, make sure that you let me know because we will add your name to the, the winner's basket and then we'll select one person for the, as for the winner. Okay, so with that being said, I do wanna talk about Mary. You talked about how we don't worship Mary, but we do believe that Mary was a virgin till the day she died, right? Right, correct. Why? Why? Because, um, in the Old Testament, there's a, in uh, Isaiah, there's a passage that says, um, the Lord God entered by this gate into the temple. And once the Lord God passed through the gate, no one else can pass through that gate because mm -hmm. it's the Lord God. And so it is made holy. It is sanctified by him and so that gate in the new testament is essentially mary she was the gate for god to become human and so her womb is, is sacrosanct it is holy um, because it held god in her womb and so there would be no one else who would be worthy enough to be you know birthed by mary to be in the same womb that god inhabited no other pure human being. So um, that's why, and then that's, that's been the teaching of the church since the very beginning is that uh, uh, Jesus through, you know, miraculous birth, uh, Mary remained virgin and that her and, and Joseph were essentially lived as, as brother and sister. And uh, uh, I mean, 
Catholics have believed that, Martin Luther believed that, John Calvin believed that, uh, all of the early Protestant reformers believed in the perpetual virginity of Mary. So it's been a teaching of Christianity for 2,000 years. And it, and it just goes back to Mary being the Ark of the Covenant. You know, and the Ark of the Covenant in the Old Testament had the, the, the staff of Aaron, the high priest, had the manna from heaven, and had the Ten Commandments, the Word of God written in stone. Mary, the Ark of the Covenant in the New Testament, had not the staff of the high priest, but the high priest himself, Jesus Christ, not the manna from heaven that is bread, but Jesus in the flesh, the mm -hmm. manna from heaven, and the word of God not in stone, but again in the flesh, in the person of Jesus Christ. The Ark of the Covenant was so holy that if someone touched it, they yeah. died. Yeah. They died. So that's, Mary was so holy. Now, Joseph obviously probably as her husband would have touched her, held her, you know, supported her to do things. But uh, um, it, she was so holy. And again, she was, she was the receptacle within which God used, the person God used to bring his son into the world. And therefore, once God has passed through that gate, no one else is going to pass through that gate. Oh, you know, and I, and I, I hear you. And I think that, you know, that is, that should not divide us because, you know, you, you have the, the Protestants who do not believe that they don't also don't believe that the Eucharist is uh, the actual body um, right. of, 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 so those are the differences that, that if we look at that only, it will divide us. But right. if we look at all the other things that, you know, the church does do and all the wonderful, because you hear about the pedophilia, you hear about the priests that have molested children. That's just another. But I say um, that is a person acting on their own behalf. But when there's a cover up and that just gets so blown out of, you know, there it, are sinners in the Catholic church. Okay. The but there's sinners in every church. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, the, the Catholic church is not, but is not the only one that has had uh, problems. <laughs> no, um, but hey, let me real quick. Yeah. Mary divides Catholics and Protestants, but it, actually Mary is a uniting point for Catholic and Muslim because Mary is very, she is the most revered woman in Islam. Mm -hmm. And Miriam is the most common female name in Islam. I've been told, I haven't done any research, but I have to tell me. <laughs> Sounds good. So, so it's, it, you know, Our Lady of Fatima, Fatima was Muhammad's favorite daughter. And that's, it's there. So there are connections with Mary between Catholics and Islam. It's mm. fascinating. You know, it's, it's real quick. I, I, I want to, cause we only have five minutes and I just want to, you know, we, we have different forms of this class is going to be uh, broadcast all over the world, which is of course on podcast. Um, you the people on podcasts, um, you only get a portion of the, of the class because after the theme song, Sometimes we have our little teacher's pet conversations after the class. Um, so there's so many different ways that you can learn a little bit more than the one hour limitation that we have when we're doing the class. So I wanna encourage you to go to, um, to follow us, to join us live, because for those of you who are joining us live, you're always welcome to ask a question. So if you have any questions, please type in a queue and we'll read the question um, before we end the class today. So please help us grow the classroom. And I want to say thank you to Kevin, but you're paying, praying for the success of this program. And I am so grateful to you for that. Um, and Robin, thank you for joining us. Very loving of you, John, um, uh, from Robin. She says, I listened to John on the Catholic radio. Awesome show. Wow. So, you know, we, we do have to come together. We do need to unite as one. And, um, but one of the things I wanted to ask you is interesting. What is the Catholic Church doing now with the scare, with the the highly sensitive uh, coronavirus? Uh, we just received a, an email because I I've interviewed so many different pastors and I have so many different religions. We just received an email saying that this um, church over in Merritt Island, Georgiana Church, they're canceling all their services. What is the Catholic doing to? Because I remember they uh, there was one Catholic time that Church. we weren't doing commu uh, communion. Well, they're they're not. They've basically not doing communion under both species, so both not from the cup. Um, also, there's a sign of peace during the mass where you people do the elbow. Hands. 
They don't, they're, they're basically, they're dropping the sign of peace. And many many places, masses are being canceled altogether. For the time yeah, to well, this is a time to come together, time to come together and pray. We're going to continue our conversation for a little bit after we say goodbye to the podcast. And so, John, thank you so much for My sharing. Pleasure, we only dipped our toe in know, Catholicism, didn't we? You're yeah. getting back. You're going to be invited <laughs> back. Thank you so much, John. And for those of you who are joining us today, please continue to stay tuned because we are all one. We are one. And let's look at our what we have in common. Please remember, I'll be right here waiting for you worldwide at whenyouneedafriend.com. This is Lillian McDermott and John Martinoni wishing you love, peace, joy, and the unexpected and advice abundance. Expressed on the Make Lillian it the McDermott best Radio day Show intended for the ever. individual callers and guests on the program and are presented to our wider audience solely for general educational purposes. Please act responsibly and consult personally with your own medical, psychological, or nutritional expert before taking any steps to improve your life. I am so sorry, John. Usually I get to the best day ever way before the voice so All right. starts. But you know, you are so special. You got to, to experience, uh, we got to talk over. So there's, so so churches are being um, canceled as well. Masses are being canceled, yes. Masses are being canceled. So I want to encourage, you know, with shows like EWTN, you know, we do need to come together as a community of, of, yes. of children of God. We're all kings and queens and heirs of the well, throne this is a time that much prayer is required yeah so people need to be hitting their knees and and praying to god that you know for this uh, this pestilence that is going across the land and and uh, that it be lifted and that as few people as possible be affected by it because it this has the potential to be devastate absolutely devastating well i uh, yeah uh, there's there's um that could happen with anything and i just want to encourage yes. people where whether it's the flu or it's a cold or it's anything that you might think it's contagious or if you've been exposed please be respectful of your brother and sister your neighbor your friend especially those that are most vulnerable you know, whether you believe that this is a uh, overreaction to in, in control or you think that this is something that is um, epic uh, proportions, please, it doesn't matter. Just please practice um, kindness to your neighbor and help people out. I hear that there's a, um, a shortage of toilet paper. You know, for those of you who are hoarding all your food and hoarding, all, make a little gift package to your neighbor, make sure you give them a couple of rolls of toilet paper. I, I was talking to a friend today and she said, I have no toilet paper. <laughs> Get a <Yeah>. bidet. <laughs> Get a bidet. <laughs> so, okay. So <clears throat> we didn't even talk about purgatory and limbo, which I believe was never, you know, limbo was never a part of the church, but somehow it got kind of it thrown was, in it, there. It was never a doctrine of the church. It's what you call a theological opinion. Um, basically, okay, the Catholic Church says baptism is necessary for salvation because Jesus says you can't enter the kingdom of God unless you're born again of water and the Spirit. So people would say, well, what happens to babies who they haven't committed any personal sin? If they haven't been baptized, though, they have the stain of original sin, but they haven't committed any personal sin. So the opinion came about that, well, maybe there's this limbo where babies can go and they don't have the, um, uh, the image of God directly. They're not face to face with God, but they're not suffering in the afterlife. So they have paradise in the afterlife, uh, but, but they're not in heaven per se. And again, that's just an opinion. And it, but it caught on and, and a lot of people taught it like it was doctrine. And, and it's not been, you know, the church has never said it is. They haven't said it isn't. So it's just. But does anybody it, really know? Does no, anybody exactly. really know? And those are the exactly. things that I get so frustrated about when it's an opinion and you can argue opinions because my opinion might be different than your opinion. But the fact is that no one really knows. That's correct. And my dad, uh, he, was, he had a PhD in chemistry, has all sorts of patents, very smart man. He would always tell me, he said, John, no one's opinion is wrong because it's their opinion you know it's their opinion it's like your feelings 
you know, I have my feelings, you have your feelings, you can't argue feelings. Mm -hmm. But like you say, you can argue fact, or well, you can discuss facts and you can argue, well, is this true? Is that true? You can discuss all of that. And when I say argue, I don't mean, you know, blood yeah. pain popping and all that, but just discussion, dialogue. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's, uh, um, but things that you have no way of knowing, why are you bothering arguing about this? Well, it's our ego. Yeah. It's our ego. It's, it's the story of Adam and Eve when they uh, ate from the forbidden fruit. Pride. Yes. The original it's, sin. Yep. Yeah. And so, you know, we all have a little bit of that. You know, some pride is good for us to feel like we are enough. And that, that kind of pride is really good for us. But the kind of pride that makes us think that I'm better than you and you're less than me and that that is that is not the good the the pride that i'm saying is good so it's well uh, i i always tell people i've got a lot to be conceited about but i'm not <laughs> you like that <laughs> you caught me off guard there uh, I <laughs> you caught me off guard john well with that note i will leave that uh, I, I will leave that one. Uh, I will not touch that one with a 10 foot pole, but I, I think that it's worth having this conversation. Um, there was um, a group and I, and I, I'm so sorry that that group ended. There were the three wise guys um, or oh, right. And both the Imam and the, the, um, the rabbi. rabbi. <clears throat> and of course the um, Methodists committed such a, horrible horrible crime that it ended that dialogue right. i don't know if they're in hiatus they're still in hiatus but i love the imam he's a, a wonderful man i've i've been in the i've been in his <clears throat> his mosque in the mosque when he right after um the pulse mass mass shooting i was oh, there okay. yeah and I got to see and got to learn why they do certain things a certain way instead of my own judgments, you know, and, um, but I, 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 I would love to continue this conversation, maybe put a group of people together, a Christian, you know, someone that's Hindu and, and be able to have a conversation, a respectful conversation, not to, you know, apologize or make a case for, but to say, you know, this is what we believe. And this was what sped me and my life. And, and I honor that in you. Because if this is how you got to believe, then I honor that in you. And well, so I would love to have that conversation with you and maybe some other um, people as well. Yeah, there's a, uh, a, a mega church here in town. It's a particular denomination. I won't mention which one. And they had six Wednesday nights in a row of talking about the Catholic Church. And there were Catholics who were married to members of this church. Who, the Catholics would go to mass Saturday night and go to this church Sunday morning with their spouse. And they were so upset by, they went to this thing thinking, okay, we're gonna learn about the Catholic Church versus the bad, well, I also, anyway, um, versus this other church. And uh, they, they just totally gave wrong information about the Catholic Church. Yeah. And so I went to the last presentation after I'd been told about this and I went up to the pastor afterwards. I said, look, I said, I appreciate the spirit in which you did this because the concern was for the souls of Catholics. I'm like, I appreciate people being concerned about my soul. Uh, and, but I told him, I said, you got about 75% of what you said about the Catholic church was wrong. I said, sometimes a little bit, but sometimes a lot. Yeah. And we proceeded to have a dialogue for about 10, 15 minutes. And there are people hanging around after the talk. And they were fascinated by us going back and forth. And I told them, I said, would you want to do something public like this? I said, not a debate. Not, I said, a dialogue where you can present the bat. Well, it's a Baptist. I've said it all. <laughs> you can present the Baptist faith. I can't, it just, it would just come out. You can the Baptist faith the Baptist point of view. Yeah. I can present the Catholic faith from the Catholic point of view. I told him, I said, I can guarantee you I get a thousand Catholics there. And I said, what it, what it will do is it will teach your people about the Catholic faith 
it will teach my people about the Baptist faith. And together that will help I love it. unity in the body of Christ as yeah. opposed to, you know, I told them, I said, if, if you wanted to learn about the Republican party, I said, would you go to a seminar put on by Nancy Pelosi? <laughs> <laughs> and I told him, I said, that's essentially what you have done. I said, not out of malice or, or ill will, but out of ignorance. You know, you, you think the Catholic church teaches this, but it doesn't. Yeah, and yeah. so you have given your people bad information. I'm giving you an opportunity to clear that up. And, you know, the Catholics can hear from you. Your, your Baptists can hear from me. And it'll be good for all, everyone involved. And yeah. he wouldn't do it. And oh, like, okay, well, maybe we can do it here. Maybe we can I, do it here. I, and uh, I know that Abinash Dravetti, he's, he's like the founder of the... Um, the University for Hindus, uh, I'm, I'm thinking, I hope I'm saying it right, uh, then we can do imam uh, and we can have a Jewish, a Jewish pastor or a rabbi, I'm sorry, a Jewish rabbi, and we can have a conversation to, to out of respect and honor each other because we all believe in one God. We believe in one God. And it uh, doesn't matter, you know that song that says, I don't care how you get there, get there when you, if you can. And we just need to support each other and help, you know, us see that we have more in common than we don't. Well, and Mother Mother Teresa used to say, "If you're Hindu, be a better Hindu. If you're Muslim, be a better Muslim. If you're Christian, be a better Christian." And um, because she believed that, you know, the truth that are in each of those faiths, mm -hmm. the more you embrace that truth, the closer you grow to God, who is the truth. Yeah. Yes, and, and if we truly believe that God is everywhere, God is everywhere, then that means God is in you and is in me. And if God just does, and I've always believed this, John, that if just a speck of God was in me, I could do all things. That has been the, you know, the, the two links that have helped me stand up and be bold. Because if I just have that speck of that God in me, we could do if all you, things. If you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. Very good. I'll let that be the final word. Thank you so much for watching today. I'm very grateful for all of you who tuned in. And I hope that you will continue tuning in. And let, let's uh, create something that's very respectful. Let's have as many people that want to have this dialogue and to be supportive of one another instead of, instead of fear keeping you away from another denomination, let love hold us all together as one. Because that is what truly God is. God is love and we all possess that. That was the one thing, John, when I interviewed an atheist that we had in common when it came to spirituality. They believed in love. Yeah. And I went, oh, we've got something in common. We, I believe in, in love and God is love. And that means that we believe in something together. And then during the break, I mean, I was like, like woohoo, you know, because that was the joy. That was the joy. I wanted to find something we had in common. And that was it, right? And then during the break, they said, well, the way we call love is different than your love. And I'm like, oh, come on. Get out of here. Out of here. Anyway. Um, just, just know that we are all love. If, anything good, all good things come from love. Fear, nothing good comes from fear. And so whether it's, you know, being, you know, walking into another church or having a neighbor that believes differently than you, just know that the one thing you could have in common is love because God is the creator of all. God is the creator of all. And if, that, if that's what we have in common, then I think that's good enough. What do you think, John? Well, um, I would slightly disagree with you, but okay. I, I agree with your, uh, that love is the common bond for all humanity. All humanity. I love that. Let's, let's, that's good. Well, well wait, that's great. Let's, I could do a little dance, a little love dance. Okay, guys. So, so thank you so much for watching today. We look forward to seeing you. Make sure you share this video and make sure that um, we come back and have the conversation all over again tomorrow.
Tomorrow we have Dr. Furman. We're going to talk about our nutritarian lifestyle so we can start reversing. Actually, it's going to be about weight loss and um, what we can do to actually release those pounds that um, you want to get rid of. So we'll talk soon. We'll talk to you later. We'll, we'll um, let me say goodbye on Facebook. Here we go. Say goodbye, John. Bye, everybody. And 